Hello everyone, this is BlakeWorksDB71 back finally after... How long has it been? Well, who's keeping track? So, I'm compelled to do a video because I have been on a trip recently that uh, some of you know about. Those that keep in touch with me via email. And many of you probably will be surprised to learn about. Uh, so, let me go back a few months. In October, September, I think it was October, was on vacation with my wife down in Charleston. And we meet up with a guy, Rick Sutton, uh, a dealer, a record dealer friend guy that I met years ago. Um, having lunch with him one day, and he's telling me about his two favorite bands. The Beatles? I think he said The Beatles. And then he said Sun Ra. And I thought, what? Sun Ra, come on, you've got to be kidding. No, 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 no. And then he starts telling me about his stories, Sun Ra's stories, and how there's so much to Sun Ra's music, blah, blah, blah. And I've been told that by many people in the past, but uh, I could never get over the um, the glitz and showmanship that uh, that Sonny had. But never, you know, all that aside, I did, I had bought a a book, you know, Space is a Place, uh, I'm gonna talk about it in just a second. I had bought the book several years ago, um, you may remember that I showed it, you know, when I was showing all all kinds of books, and I um, was gonna say, one day I, I will get to it, I will read it, and I'll give Sun Ra a real chance, because millions, I guess millions, <laughs> of people can't be wrong, right? So, I'm having lunch with Rick. And uh, Rick is telling me about an experience he had in Atlanta with, with, with Sonny. Um, and then I hear, you know, I'm, I'm eating my, my lunch, right? So I'm paying attention to, to what I'm eating. But I hear Rick's voice breaking up a little bit. And, and I, I looked up at him, and he's in tears. Like, Rick, man, what's going on? And he said he's having these, like, emotions about, you know, how he felt around Sun Ra and the music and I thought oh man okay so on you know a few days later on my drive on our drive back home I was thinking about it my goodness if if that is doing that to Rick who I respect very much because you know he's turned me on to lots of really good music um, I've got to give Sun Ra a, a real chance so when we got home, got unpacked, blah, 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 got back into the routine, I came upstairs and I dug my book out. Space is the Place. This is the uh, biography by John Zwed, Z S Z W E D. I don't know if you can see that. S Z W E D. Um, always referred to as the biography, the book about uh, Sun Ra. And I read through it, and boy, oh boy, um, there's a lot to where Sonny was coming from. So, yes, there is a little bit of showmanship. I can see past that, now, especially now that I understand what he was trying to do. Lots and lots of stuff. Uh, basically, he's trying to reteach the world from whence they came. Uh, so with that, uh, having read this, I thought, well, I'm going to have to start hunting down some Sun Ra music, right? I didn't have any. Well, actually, I had a few pieces, but they were much later, you know, like late 70s, early 80s kind of stuff. Uh, Black Saint, uh, Soul Note kind of releases. You know, just stuff that I just happened to pick up. So I get in touch with my friends, you know, Mike Johnson, uh, Roger Coleman, uh, Teddy, where do I start? And they pretty much all said, you know, gather some stuff and start chronologically and then you'll get a sense from where the music came and how it progressed over the years. So, alright, sounds like a good plan to me. Thankfully, there were a lot, uh, uh, I had assumed, a lot of availability in terms of the Saturn reissues, you know, Saturn, the... Um, the independent label that Sonny and and uh, the orchestra had, uh, where they released pretty much their own stuff, and you know I did get my hands on, 
you know, the the basically the Saturn reissue collection as, as much as I could. Now, an update on that. Um, actually, let me tell you, what you're hearing in the background is uh, Jazz and Silhouette. Um, this recording, uh, I'm not going to go by notes on here. Let's see. I got a cheat sheet here. Jazz and Silhouette. Uh, it says roughly 58, 59 time frame, so we'll go with that. Um, the word on the street is the information on the back is only close. Um, anyway, Saturn reissues. I, I'm having a hard time getting all of them and getting any of the major titles really because apparently uh, several distributors have come back to me and basically said they're not making them. Uh, apparently there might be some kind of legal battle going on. Uh, I don't blame that, but I'm letting you know if you're interested in picking up Sunrise reissues, get them while you can because who knows when you'll get a chance to pick them up again. Uh, I don't know what's going on, uh, but fight for what you can find. So, started gathering a lot of things and of course more books, uh, which I'll get into, and reissues. So, uh, I started going through the, the reissues essentially and what I could get my hands on chronologically. Right now I'm kind of in where I think the sweet spot is, which is the mid-60s uh, choreographers workshop stuff. You know, they're really trying things out, very experimental, very small group, uh, relatively speaking, in terms of the orchestra size. Uh, so I'm right there in that time frame. Uh, uh, d very deliberately listening, you know, closely to what's going on. Um, but since then, you know, I learned about Marshall Allen and the orchestra. You still touring, even with some of the original members from the the Sunra days. Uh, got to see them. You saw a couple of uh, peaks at uh, a couple of the shows that that I did, and also met up with uh, Dave Sequoia Flame in uh, Jacksonville, which was which was pretty fun. That was also his first uh, meeting of Marshall Allen and, and the Sunra crew. Very very fun. Um, just uh, I don't know how to explain it other than I I, I traveled with lots of. Uh, Lots of stuff going on in my head, uh, thinking about many, many, many things, um, but left feeling like there's a lot of hope, there's a lot of joy. Um, I think that's the message that uh, Sonny was trying to bring, and uh, they're still doing it. So give it a try if you uh, if you get an opportunity. So. I'm watching the clock, it's eight minutes now. I want to show some more books uh, because if you're interested in Sun Ra, I, I highly recommend reading about his past, reading, you know, I'm, I'm a, I've always believed that the more, the more you learn about what's going on with a particular musician or, or group and, and then hearing the music with that knowledge, I think you gain more out of it. Um, some will argue that music should stand up on its own and you know, if that's your opinion, that's your opinion. I'm just here to say that if you learn more about the music and what's going on uh, in the time frame, in the context of the music, I think you'll get a lot more out of it. So, having said that, please, if there's only one thing that you read, read this book uh, before you dig into Sun Ra, or even if you, you have got Sun Ra and you've been bitten by the orchestra bug, go back and read this. Uh, I've read it twice already and uh, I definitely will read it again soon. Another thing that I picked up, um, well I'll go to this one, uh, Thomas Stanley uh, wrote this a couple of years ago, uh, The Execution of Sun Ra. Um, it says Volume 2, there is no Volume 1, just, just letting you know Volume 2 was a game that they played. Sonny liked the number 2 more so than number 1 and so uh, Thomas Stanley uh, went went the same route and called it volume two, but uh, in, in hindsight, he, he, he admits to me in an email that maybe he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but regardless, uh, very good book. Uh, so Thomas came to Sun Ra's music, I think in the very early 80s, maybe 80, 81, 82 time frame. And basically this book uh, 
it's not really a a musicologist take on Sun Ra's music, but a very personal, this is what his music did to me, how it opened up my eyes to what's going on in the world, and how my life has changed because of it. Very good book. Also read it twice. Uh, very, very in your face and real. Uh, I love it. Um, thank you, Thomas, uh, for writing this. I, I dig it. Really do. And I encourage everybody else to give this a try. So, interviews and essays, John Sinclair, uh, you may remember him or his name from the N MC5, um, a collection of, well, as it says, interviews and essays and things that mostly from John, but other uh, contributors as well. Uh, mostly interesting, but I found it repeated a lot of what I already had learned from uh, Zoed's biography, Space is a Place. Um, Sonny uh, wrote a lot of poetry, and this was released, uh, well, he released a couple of books of poetry, maybe even three books of poetry in his lifetime, uh, but this is a collected um, book of all of the, the writings, The Immeasurable Equation, uh, Wolf and uh, Gherkin, um, so I gotta be honest. Uh, even even an educated uh, English uh, punk like myself, um, the writing is not very good. Uh, but the messages that he puts in his writings um, are are often very informative of where his mind is thinking. So definitely not one to pick up and read front to back like I tried to and could not do. Uh, but more so pick up read a dozen or 20 pages and put it down and, and just let it go at that. Uh, I felt defeated because I couldn't read it through, uh, but I now know that it really is not the intent of, of what Sonny would have wanted. Now, one more book. So, you may have heard, if you're a Sun Ra aficionado, uh, of a book, um, Gherkin and Chris Trent, uh, I think Gherkin was the uh, uh, the original creator of the Sun Ra Omniverse. Uh, 70s, I think, mid 70s, maybe early to mid 70s. Oh, I could be completely wrong. It could be 80s. I'm not quite sure when the first original version came out. Uh, very, very short print. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars today if you bought the original. Uh, at the end of last year, they released a, a basically an update to the, the the Omniverse. As you can see, it's practically uh, coffee table size. Uh, lots of information, lots of good articles, photographs. That's just outstanding. Uh, even comes with a a, uh, a discography. Um, very detailed discography, correcting many of the uh, the, the the thing the uh, quote unquote mistakes and research. Actually, there was another book I forgot to show you that the the, uh, the original discography. But uh, I, I've now learned that the one published in here works even better for me. Uh, even um, photographs of like all of the releases. Um, original Saturn covers and things. Uh, just really, really, really good. It's not cheap. Um, I'll post in the comments section uh, about this where you can get it. Um, it's an Art Yard publication and the, uh, there is a distributor reseller here in the U.S. that you can get it without having to pay an ungodly amount to, to ship it overseas like I did. I should have waited, but I'm impatient. So yes, uh, get this if you can. Uh, even this uh, edition is limited. Um, definitely worth it. Now, that was a lot. Uh, so, right now, uh, yes, I'm very heavily uh, involved in my mini comic zine. Uh, that has gone ex exceptionally well. It's still well received. Um, I didn't think it was going to last near as long as it has, and, and we're still going strong. So that's where that's where most of my my 
FaceTime has been is, is keeping that going, which means a lot of email and a lot of correspondence. Uh, but now the Sunra, this whole Sunra thing since the uh, since October, September, October time frame has really got me back into listening closely and more frequently than than I have been giving it. And for the most part, it's been essentially studying Sun Ra and the orchestra. Uh, so again, get. Uh, Go out and get your, your Saturn reissues while you can. Um, I don't know the details, but I do know from experience it's been very hard to get even some of the common titles that you wouldn't think would be difficult. Um, haven't been able to get them because the resellers can't get them from the distributors, and more than one have come back and said, they're not making them anymore. And uh, one guy has gone as far as saying that they believe there is a licensing argument going on. So chances are somebody's trying to pick that up and uh, do their own reissues. I don't know the details. I'm only relaying what has been leaked to me. Um, so have I got anything else? I don't think. Uh, 16 minutes probably enough to hear uh, about Sun Ra rambling, but there it is. Um, I'm back. Probably not frequently, but uh, uh, I'm here. So I uh, would love to hear your own stories and your opinions about Sun Ra and the surroundings. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? And it's good to be back. Take care, guys. See you later. I promise. I do. Really? <laughs>